To create a new external style sheet, I can go to File, New File, and I'm gonna save this. And for now, we'll just keep it all on our desktop. And I'm gonna give it a name of style, but you can call it anything you want. The only requirement though, is to specify that we're dealing with a CSS file, a style sheet. It needs to be .css at the end. So now we have this blank file. How do we create a link from this style sheet to this HTML page? Now we could try it again and we could say h1 and this is the syntax that you'll get familiar with very quickly. You specify the element name and then within curly braces you specify your property and value. And for additional ones you would do the exact same thing, property, value. But this alone, if we were to come back to preview, it's not taking effect and how come? Well, we've created this style sheet, but in no way have we referenced it or linked to it on this page. So let's do that right now. Now, anytime we're going to be including files, referencing files, it should probably be stored within the head element. This isn't 100% true all the time, but as a rule of thumb, it is. So let's link to a style sheet, and I'm gonna use the link element. So first we need to specify what kind of link is this that we're referencing. It's a style sheet. So we'll say rel equals style sheet. Next, it needs to know where is the location of this. And we use that by doing the href property or the href attribute. You might hear some people refer to it as href as well. Both are fine. And now we're going to pass in the name. Because both of these are in the same directory, I can reference it like so, style. CSS. Now again, because we're not going to be adding any value within this element, we can self-close it. So if we want to do it like so, that's fine. Or you can get away with not self-closing and it'll be done automatically for you, whatever you prefer. So now we've created a connection between this file and this file. And now what's great about this is whenever we want to update the presentation of our little blog article, we never have to touch this file. We only touch this. So let's try it out, preview, and sure enough, now it's taking effect. Let's, let's try it out, I'm gonna change it to green, and now you'll see that changes to green. Now what I like about Espresso and some other editors is notice this is live updating. So I can place one window here and one here, and I can immediately see the effect. Let's take a look at a couple more. Font size, let's set it to 50 pixels. You'll use pixels a lot, and it's similar to point if you come from a print world. You can even use them, but in general, sizing is a little bit different. We tend to deal with 50 pixels, and notice the font size has changed. Now, what if we want more spacing below this text? Well, let's apply some margin, and we'll say 100 pixels worth, and notice how it pushes all of that down. Alternatively, if we wanted to push it from the top, we could say margin top. Get this element and give it some breathing room up top. Okay, so we're not covering CSS specifically in this particular lesson. We'll do that in a future episode. But now we know how to create a connection from an external style sheet to our HTML file. Now, you're probably used to though, notice if I stretch this out, the text takes up all of the room. That's a lot to read. My eyes start to get blurry. I need those lines to be shorter. So the way we do that is by specifying a width. So we have a couple options here. We could specify a width to this body element, though we may not want to do it. It really just depends on the project. For now, we're going to create what's known as a div element. And notice because I'm wrapping all of this text within a parent element, I should indent it and I'll do that right now. That way it's easy to tell that this is a parent and these are its children. So if I were to view that again, I'm not gonna see anything different. And when I was first learning, I remember telling one of my teachers, I don't understand even what a div is. What is the point of a div? It's for layout. You use a div to help with layout. So now, think about it. If I wanted to apply some margin left to all of these elements, let's see how we would do it. We'll get rid of the green text. And now I'm gonna say margin left 100 pixels. And if I come back and preview it, now this text has been pushed over and it seems like we're starting to get it centered. But now these paragraphs aren't in the same position and that looks really unprofessional. So we could try doing it again. Margin left, 100 pixels. Okay, and that seems like it's a little better, but notice we're having to do this for every single element. That doesn't seem smart at all. As soon as we add a new subheading, my subheading perhaps, and we come back, 
we end up with this exact same issue. So one way to fix this is when you're duplicating values, duplicating properties and values, you don't have to repeat yourself. We can instead do comma p like so. And now we're saying get the h1 elements and get the p tags and then apply that. And I can get rid of this and we get the same effect. But still, if we have to do that for every single one, not smart, is it? Wouldn't it be smarter if we could specify a parent element and I could say get that wrapping div so let's create it again so now we can say apply a margin left of 100 pixels to this wrapping element so let's try it now change that to div come back and now everything has been pushed over and we didn't have to do it for every single element that is the point of div it's for layout but one problem here see this div let's say I add another one maybe I need right here we're gonna create a div and I'm gonna copy this. Let's say we have a new content and we need to position this element as well. Okay. And if we come back, notice how this is receiving the exact same positioning as this one. Because when we specify this, we're saying get all divs. But what if I don't want this one to receive the exact same styling? For example, I can say color red. And unless one of these children elements overrides that, that property, they will all receive it. But what if I want this one below here to be green text for some reason? How do I do that? Well, in that case, maybe it's more appropriate to uh, provide an identifier, an identification, so that I can say, no, only find the element with a ID or a class name of a particular value. So we can do the first one, which is ID. And for now, we'll just say my div, although, this is rarely a good name because it doesn't describe the content. So we could say article, come back, div, and now we can say get the div with an ID of article. How do we specify it? Could we do this? Nope. What we have to do is use the pound symbol. And now that says find a div element, but only the div element that has an ID of article. So if I go back, now notice that we're only targeting this specific one, and this was not included. So. What is a class? Now, a class is a little more appropriate. You should use these when you can. And we reference a class by using a period, div article. And for this case, we'll simply repeat that. If we come back, we're going to get the exact same effect. So what's the difference? And the difference is an ID can only be applied to one single element. You can't reference anything else with an ID of article. But if you apply a class name, you can do that to multiple things. So when would you use a class? Well, imagine if you want specific images within your blog to receive some padding and some background colors. Well, you're gonna use that exact same styling on every single blog article and maybe at multiple points within that article. So in that case, it's smart to give it a class. And then you can say, anytime an image has a class of this value, then it should receive that styling and we don't have to repeat ourselves over and over. Now, let's come back to when we had an ID. ID equals article. Wouldn't it make sense, wouldn't we think with HTML when so much of the web is blogs, that there would be an article element, an article tag? And the answer is, Yes, and with HTML5, we can use that now. This is more semantic and it's more appropriate because this is our article. So I'm gonna paste that in. And now, once we get rid of this, we're going to get the exact same effect, but now this is more semantic and we're using an appropriate article element. Now, if you're wondering, how do I know all of these elements available? Or search for HTML elements and you'll come across a massive list of everything that's available to you. Okay, so just do a little bit of Googling and you'll find lots of options. So do note though, that we're no longer receiving this custom styling and that's because we're no longer targeting an ID. All we wanna target now is the element with a name of article. Now, I also wanna, before we get rid of this, I want you to know that this div, it's somewhat superfluous. We don't need it. If we got rid of it, it's the exact same effect. Find an element with an ID of article. So you can leave that off. Now in this case, we're not looking for an ID, we're looking for a tag name. So we just reference it like so. And if I come back, now that's been pushed over. Now truthfully, we know that this isn't great because we're still getting all of the spacing on the left. What we really want is this to be centered on our page. And we can do that by specifying a width, let's say 500 pixels. And then 
when we do our margins, rather than doing specific values, watch what happens when I set it to auto and we expand it. Sure enough, it's perfectly centered on the page and we have our first blog article. So what does auto mean? Auto means this is shorthand and this references margin top, margin right, margin bottom, and margin left. It's the exact same thing as if we did this. As you can see right there, if we were to get rid of that, the exact same effect, but we're gonna use shorthand, it's much smarter. So what's most important though is with auto, we're saying that the margin left and the margin right have to be identical in their value. So you can't have 500 pixels here and 1,000 pixels on the right. So the only way that they can be the exact same width is if your content is perfectly centered on the page. So good job, you've created your first HTML with CSS blog article.